In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to use Zotero to save yourself hours, days, or maybe even weeks worth of work formatting your references and citations. I'm gonna walk you through the entire process from registering and installing Zotero through to managing your Zotero library, and of course, using it within a word processor such as Google Docs or Microsoft Word. So let's do it. Hey, Derek here from Grad Coach. To kick things off, let's take a quick look at how this tutorial will be structured. First, I'm gonna explain what exactly Zotero is and why it's such an incredibly useful tool to have in your academic writing arsenal. From there, I'll take you through the registration and installation process, after which I'll walk you through the actual Zotero library interface and explain each section so that you can get maximum value from the software. Once we've laid that foundation, we'll look at the various ways in which you can add resources to Zotero and then manage your reference library like a pro. Last but not least, we'll look at how to use Zotero within a word processor such as Google Docs or Microsoft Word to make inserting your citations and building your reference list super, super simple. If you'd prefer to skip past any of these sections, you can find the timestamps in the description. And so without further delay, let's jump into it. So let's start by quickly addressing the question, what exactly is is Zotero and why should you even use it? Well, simply put, Zotero is a powerful little tool that makes the task of referencing a lot easier and more accurate. Essentially, you just load up the reference information into Zotero once, and then Zotero will make sure that all of your in-text citations as well as your reference list are perfectly, perfectly formatted according to your university's required referencing system. Simply put, Zotero takes care of the time-consuming and error-prone task of formatting citations and references, which of course saves you loads of time and also makes sure that it is done 100% accurately, something which is pretty much impossible to do if you manage your references manually. Best of all, Zotero is completely free to use up to a data storage limit of 300 megabytes, which if you're just storing reference data will be more than enough. It's worth noting that Zotero is a competitor of sort to Mendeley, which also offers much of the same functionality and a bit more. If you are still shopping around for a referencing solution, we've got a tutorial video covering Mendeley as well, and you can find the link to that in the description. So let's start by getting you set up with Zotero. The first thing that you'll need to do is download the actual Zotero software, which is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'll be using the Mac version in this video, but the functionality and layout are much the same across the board. To download Zotero, just head over to zotero.org or .com, they both take you to the same place, and hit the download button. You can then install Zotero and open it up. When you open Zotero for the first time, it will automatically load up this web page. If for any reason it doesn't, you can find the link in the description below this video. As the page suggests, the next thing you'll need to do is add the Zotero connector to your browser, for example, Chrome or Firefox. But what exactly is the Zotero connector? Well, simply put, the connector is a really handy little browser plugin that allows you to quickly add web-based resources to your Zotero library. For example, news articles, journal articles, or just general web pages. I'll show you exactly how to use the connector a little later in this video, but for now, you just need to add it to your browser. Last but not least, you'll want to register a free Zotero account. This isn't mandatory, but I would really recommend it as it ensures that all of your reference data is backed up to the cloud, which is really handy when you spill coffee all over your laptop. The Zotero account also allows you to synchronize your Zotero library across multiple devices, which is super useful if you're working on more than one device. To register, just head back to the start page. Again, we'll include that link below in case you missed it and enter your details. Keep this login information close because we're gonna explain how to use it a little later in this video. All right, so now that we've got all the puzzle pieces in place, let's take a quick look at the Zotero interface so that you can understand what each section does and how to get the most out of Zotero. The home base of Zotero is what's called the library and it's what you'll see whenever you open the Zotero application. This area is where you will input and manage all of your reference data. 
As you can see, we already have some resources visible here, while yours will of course be blank at first. But don't worry, I'll show you exactly how to add resources to your library a little later. So if we look at the main menu on the left, you'll see that this area provides a few ways to organize and filter your reference library. Most commonly, you'll use the My Library option, which will show all of your resources. But you can also create custom collections and you can add your own publications and so on. Of course, I'll show you how to do all of this in the next section. Continuing down, you'll see this area which contains a set of tags. In short, you can tag any resource with whatever tag you choose and then use this section to filter the library down to only those resources that have the specific tag. This functionality is really useful for tagging key variables, constructs, contexts, or anything else that you can think of. Lastly, let's move over to the right side of the Zotero interface. This section displays the reference data for whichever resource you've selected in the library. This will typically include the title, the author, the date, the publication, and a whole lot of other attributes depending on the type of resource. Again, we'll dig into this in the next section. All right, so that's just a quick overview of the library interface to give you a big picture view of what everything looks like. And now that we've got that out of the way, let's look at how to actually use Zotero. The first thing that you'll need to do is to synchronize your Zotero application with your Zotero account, which you created a little bit earlier. Obviously, if you decide not to create a Zotero account, you can just skip this step. But as I mentioned, it's definitely a good idea to register for an account. To synchronize your Zotero app, just select the main menu followed by settings and then sync. Then just enter your details there and you'll be all set. You only need to do this once. With that sorted, the next task is to add your reference data to Mendeley. This is the least exciting part for most students, but the good news is that Zotero offers quite a few different options to fast track this process. Naturally, given that you're using Zotero to save yourself time, you wanna try to spend as little time as possible adding reference data into Zotero. So I'm gonna show you all of the options that are available, and then you can decide what works best for you. The first way to add reference information to Zotero is by manually entering the information. This is the most time consuming option, certainly the least popular option, but I wanna talk about it first so that you can see exactly what information Zotero captures. So the way that you do this is to click the little green plus button up top, followed by the resource type, for example, a journal article or a book chapter. You can also go down to the more option to find a whole lot of other resource types. Now, it's important to mention here that you must select the correct type of resource as most referencing systems, for example, Harvard or APA, will present the reference list, that's the list at the end of your document, differently depending on the resource type. In other words, if you capture this information incorrectly, your reference list won't come out the right way. So if we select the journal article option, yeah, you can see that Zotero then allows you to manually enter in all the key information, such as the author, the date, the title, and so on. The exact fields that will be available here will vary depending on the type of resource that you select. For example, the options for a journal article will be different from the options for a patent. Now, if you're looking at this and feeling a little bit overwhelmed by all of the fields that can be filled in, don't worry, it's not necessary to fill in every single field, but you do need to include whichever fields will show up in the reference list, which again will depend on your chosen referencing system, for example, APA or Harvard. So that covers the first option for adding reference data to Zotero, which is of course manual entry. As you can see, this is the slowest and most labor intensive option. So you'll probably want to avoid this route as much as possible but I wanted to run through it first just so that you can see what all Zotero captures. The next option for adding data to Zotero is to upload or link the actual article PDF. This is most useful for academic journal articles as Zotero will often automatically import all or at least most of the reference data from the PDF itself, which of course saves you a lot of time. To do this, again, you'll click the little green plus button but then you'll either choose link to file or store a copy of the file. Both of these options achieve the same thing in terms of automatically importing the data, 
but the store a copy option also stores the PDF within Zotero itself for easy access, whereas the link to file option just provides a link to wherever you save the file on your computer. So if we go ahead and add a PDF, you can see that Zotero first loads the plain file name, and then a moment or two later, it auto populates all the reference data. This is of course a huge time saver. So if you have PDF copies of your resources, definitely give this option a try. That said, it's always a good idea to double check the imported data just to make sure it's 100% correct. Sometimes Zotero won't pick up every data point, so you wanna just check that to be sure. The third option for loading reference data into Zotero is possibly the simplest and fastest, and that is to use an identifier such as a DOI or an ISBN. Again, this only applies to journal articles and books, but it is a super efficient way to add resources. So you'll definitely wanna make use of it whenever possible. To use this method, simply click on the little magic wand button and then paste in the identifier. Zotero accepts quite a wide range of identifiers, including ISBNs, DOIs, and PMIDs. And you can usually find this information very easily when looking at any academic database. You can then just copy paste the identifier into Zotero. And as you can see, it automatically feeds all of the relevant info directly into Zotero, saving you a huge amount of time. Again, a word of caution, yeah, always do double check the data just to make sure that it's 100% correct. All right, onto the final option, which is to use the Zotero connector, which if you remember, is the little browser plugin that we installed a bit earlier. As I mentioned, the Zotero connector is super useful for grabbing reference information from web pages or any web-based resources. To use the connector, simply visit the web page for the resource that you're interested in, for example, a news article or a journal article within an academic database, and then click the Zotero icon up in the top right. The reference info will then automatically populate within your Zotero library. But as always, be sure to just double check that and fill in any missing information. So that covers the main options in terms of getting reference data into your Zotero library. Of course, if you are currently using a different reference management software and you wanna move over to Zotero, you can also import your full library using a few different formats, including Bibtex and RIS, as well as Mendeley Online Libraries. To do that, just click My Library, then File, and then Import. All right, so now that we've loaded the reference data into Zotero, let's talk about how you can use Zotero to manage your library effectively. And you might be thinking, well, why do I need to manage my library? But trust me, these references do add up quickly and it's easy to lose track of which article said what. So this is an important bit of functionality for you to wrap your head around. First, let's look at collections. Collections are essentially folders, which means that you can use them to group resources into certain themes or methodologies or variables or whatever makes sense for you. To create a collection, just right click on my library and select new collection. You can then just drag and drop the relevant resources into whichever collection makes sense for you. It's worth pointing out that regardless of whether you put your resources into collections, all of the resources will always be visible in the My Library section. So don't worry about not being able to remember which collection you dropped a resource into. It's also worth noting that you can create sub-collections by right-clicking on any given collection and then selecting new sub-collection. Within the left sidebar, you'll notice that there are also some other options. My Publications is a place for you to house your own past work, for example, any research papers or dissertations that you wrote in the past. Duplicate items simply lists any resources that were mistakenly added twice or duplicated in some way, and it also allows you to easily merge those items. And lastly, the unfiled items section simply displays any resources that you haven't placed into a collection. Moving down to the bottom corner of the Zotero interface, you'll find the tags section. Clicking on any of these tags will filter the library down to show only the articles with those tags. To use this feature, you'll need to first tag your resources according to whatever structure suits you. To do that, simply select the resource that you want to tag 
then select the tags button up in the top right and add a tag or multiple tags as necessary. Moving back up to the top bar, the final navigation tool that you'll want to make use of is the search function, which you can access by just clicking the little magnifying glass. As you can see, Zotero provides you with some pretty fine grained search functionality here. You can search using quite a few different parameters and you can also save your searches. So you'll definitely wanna make use of this, especially if you have a larger collection. Now, it's worth mentioning that while the search function as well as tags and collections are all pretty useful ways to organize and navigate your reference data, they are somewhat limited. If you are working with a larger collection of references for something like a literature review, it's generally best to use a literature catalog spreadsheet to keep track of all your resources. By using a custom spreadsheet, you can create as many different attributes as you like, and you can easily filter and sort according to a specific attribute or a combination of attributes. For example, if you wanna find studies within a certain context that also use a very specific methodology. If you'd like, like we do have a free literature catalog spreadsheet that you can download and customize as you wish. And you can find the link to that in the description. Now let's move on to the actual resources themselves. You'll notice that if you click on any given resource, Zotero will show you all of the captured information in the right sidebar. You can edit any piece of information by just clicking on the respective field and all of the info will be saved automatically. If you look at the top of the sidebar, you'll see a notes option. In this area, you can make notes that are specific to each resource. This can be really useful for jotting down the key takeaways of each article in relation to your research aims or questions, or just making any other notes that you wanna keep handy. Zotero does allow quite a bit of customization here in terms of formatting, so do play around with this. It's also worth mentioning that whenever you create a note, it will be added to the drop-down section of the resource over here. Returning to the top of the right sidebar, you'll see an option called tags, which we've already covered. And then the last option you'll see is something called related. The related function allows you to link any given resource to other resources so that you can quickly look up related papers. This can be handy for keeping track of how papers connect to each other, but it is admittedly a bit basic. If you really want to explore relationships and connections between papers, a spreadsheet-based literature catalog is still likely the best option. Remember, you can grab a free copy of our catalog spreadsheet using the link in the description. One final bit of functionality that I want to highlight is Zotero's built-in PDF viewer. If you look at the final column in the main window, you'll see that many resources have a little PDF icon next to them, which indicates that the PDF is either linked to or uploaded into the Zotero library. If you double click that icon, the PDF will load up within Zotero, which can be really useful. What's more is that you can make little notes and comments in the PDF itself, and you can also highlight specific pieces of information using the buttons up top. This means that Zotero can act as your home base for not just reference information, but the actual articles as well, keeping everything neatly organized in one place. All right, so now that we have looked at how to add and manage your reference data within Zotero, it's time to get to the most important part, which is of course using Zotero within your actual word processor. This is where the magic really happens, so let's have a look. For this tutorial, I'm using Google Docs as my word processor as it integrates really seamlessly with the Chrome browser plugin but the process will be much the same if you're using Microsoft Word. If you'd like me to do a tutorial specifically for Microsoft Word, please do let me know in the comments. So let's take a quick look at the interface. Once you've got the Zotero connector plugin installed, you'll notice that you now have a new menu option within Google Docs and that menu is titled Zotero. This menu provides you with pretty much everything you need to manage both your citations, that's in-text citations, and your reference list within Google Docs. So first, let's add some in-text citations. To do this, simply place your cursor at the point that you want to add the citation, and then select the Zotero menu, followed by the Add or Edit Citation option. The first time that you do this, Zotero will pop up and it will ask you which referencing system you wanna use, for example, APA or Harvard, 
And then Google Docs will also ask you if you want to grant permission to Zotero to edit your document, which of course will be necessary. Just follow the prompts and you'll return to a page that looks like this. This red bar is where you're going to search for and select the resource that you want to cite. You can search by title of the resource or by the author, whichever works for you. Once you find the relevant resource, simply select it and press enter and then Zotero will insert the citation into your document. If you want to insert multiple citations for one sentence, then just keep searching and selecting in the prior step before pressing enter. Alternatively, you can click on the citation itself and then select edit with Zotero and add a few more citations. It's worth noting that you can also change the appearance of this little Zotero red bar to show a list of citations rather than having to search for them. To do this, go to add or edit citations as usual and then click the drop down menu and select classic view. As you can see, this gives you a view that looks a bit more like the actual Zotero interface. So feel free to use that if you prefer. Once you've added all of your in-text citations, it is of course time to create your reference list or what Zotero calls a bibliography. To create a reference list or bibliography, all you need to do is place your cursor where you want to place the actual list and then select add or edit bibliography from the Zotero menu. Zotero will then automatically create and insert a full reference list into your document, perfectly formatted according to the referencing style that you selected earlier. This bit of functionality alone will save you a huge amount of time and it will also ensure that your reference list is 100% accurate. Of course, that's provided that you inputted the data 100% correctly. The only thing that you may still need to do is to set the line spacing based on your institution's requirement. For example, APA and MLA both require double line spacing. If you are using APA or MLA, be sure to check out our tutorial videos for those formats. As always, links in the description. If for some reason you find that you have to change the referencing format after the fact, you can just select the document preferences option from the Zotero menu and then select the relevant option. Zotero provides built-in support for all of the most popular formats, but if you require something else, you can find plenty more options by heading back to the Zotero desktop application, opening the settings, heading to the site tab and selecting get additional styles. Alternatively, if your university has its own style and can provide you with a CSL file, you can import that by clicking the little plus button over here. Heading back to our document, one more thing to be aware of is that you will need to refresh your reference list whenever you add new citations to your document or edit any reference data within the Zotero application itself. For example, if you generated your reference list and then went back and added a few more in-text citations, you need to refresh that reference list to make sure that it's 100% up to date. To do that, just head up to the Zotero menu and hit refresh. All right, so once you have finalized your document and are done with all things referencing related, you may consider unlinking your references. Doing this will turn all of your citations as well as your reference list into plain text and it will completely disconnect your document from your Zotero library. This is useful if you're planning to send your document off to a proofreader or to any other third party and you want to make sure that there are no compatibility issues or that there's no risk of the link breaking between your document and your Zotero library. To do this, simply head over to the Zotero menu once again and select the unlink citations option. But if you do do this, please make sure that it's the very, very last thing that you do as you won't be able to rebuild your reference list once you've unlinked your references. If you got value from this tutorial, I'd really, really appreciate if you hit that like button so that more students can find this resource. If you wanna learn more about academic writing and research, be sure to subscribe to the Grad Coach channel and also be sure to check out the Grad Coach blog where you can find tons of free resources, tools, and guides to fast track your academic writing. So until next time, good luck.